This is episode 142 of the Rise Up Podcast. We're a morning radio show hosted by Steve and Tim on Family Life, a network of stations across New York and Pennsylvania. This podcast is a weekly conversation designed to help you think and laugh and keep your eyes on Jesus. If you haven't already, subscribe today so you don't miss a single episode. And find out more about our show at familylife.org. Sharing the message of hope, it's Rise Up with Steve and Tim on Family Life. So are you a believer? Do you believe fully, 100%, that God can use all things? Whew. Wow, he can work through it. I got to believe it. Romans See, 8, 28, yeah, right? Yep, yeah? Yep. All mm-hmm. things are good. Okay, so you believe that. So it's like, okay, yeah, I believe that. God can take something that maybe doesn't look good at the moment, but use it for his glory. Happy Halloween. Yep. He can use that. Of course he can. How does that work? Yeah. Well, it it works because God is good and because we're not. Um, You know, honestly, really. Because I I think about the thing that that we get upset about Halloween as Christians, and there's a lot of good reasons for getting upset about Mm -hmm. it, because there's there's just some plain dark things out there. Right. I think sometimes, I'm going to try to tread carefully on this, because I I see both sides of this argument. I do too. Sometimes we look at where something originated, where it started, and we say, yeah, yeah, but if you understood where this came from, you'd know it's a really bad thing. I, I get that reasoning, but also, don't we see so many places where something has a bad start and a good thing can come out of it? And I really think there's a lot of room here for personal conviction, mm-hmm. personal right. disagreement. Right. I think about, Steve, how... It's the only time I've seen my daughter get to interact with total strangers in town. Mm. Yeah, she sees strangers at other places. Sure. But strangers who, like, there's an interaction. Like, I say something, you say something, you give me something, what, candy? And then, like, there's smiles and there's fun and, and it's gener- and it's, like, altogether a wholesome interaction. That happened when, as a little one, she was getting to go around for Halloween. As a two-year-old, her first time. Hmm. I'll say that, too, that as a two-year-old, uh, you better believe a father of a two-year-old is looking out for making sure that we're in a good neighborhood for that. Sure. Because, man, I don't want my kids exposed to a lot of the stuff that you do see this time of year. It's one of those things. I, I don't want to apply a blanket rule to it this way, that way. Like, there's there's a lot of discernment, I think, that has to go on with it. I liked what you said earlier, Tim, about personal conviction, because be, let us be clear. We are not saying you have to go out and celebrate Mm-mm. that holiday. We're Mm-mm. not saying that whatsoever. If you have that personal conviction not to, that's your personal conviction, and and we're good with that. We're just saying that God can use—there's many churches out there yep. who they call it different things, and harvest festivals, and this festival, and that festival. And what if—and this is—many churches have seen this, where they have a festival like that based on, you know, this time of year and that holiday— but it's called something else, but they're still—and they bring the unchurched into their church who may not ever, you know, get in the doors of a church otherwise. Yeah, right. But they get to the church, right. they see these people, and they're like, oh, okay, I like—and what if, in that situation, here's a what if, let's say, okay, they're having one of those, and someone comes in, they accept the Lord <sighs> as their Savior, yeah. and and you just never know. So that's one example of God can use something that, yes, if you have a personal conviction, don't. Don't celebrate it. Yeah. That, that's fine. But these are opportunities that God can use that some people would look like, okay, I'm going to this thing. As I, and then they get there, and it's like they see loving people caring for them in a way they've never seen before. So that's just one small yeah. example of how God can use this time of year for his glory. I think also, Steve, something really good can happen when we disagree well with each other as Christians. So, I mean, we usually talk on the radio— and where it's broadcast as opposed to podcast like this. Mm-hmm. And so that means it's happened to both you and I, Steve, where we'll say something and it's going out to so many people, somebody's going to hear it who disagrees with it. Mm-hmm. And inevitably, somebody's going to find a way to get a hold of you. You know, email you, call the front office. And you, know, and, and you and I, Steve, have both had those conversations with people who have heard us say something on the radio that, frankly, they didn't like too much. Sure. But I think I can also say this, and thanks for letting me speak so much for your experience, Steve, because I just think it's happened to both of us, where they do it in a gracious way. It's not somebody calling and saying, I can't believe that you said this on the radio. I can't believe that. But like, if somebody has a conviction that's different than yours, you can have that disagreeing conversation in a loving way as brothers and sisters. You don't have to get mad about it. And you don't have to like think they're the worst Christian because they think something different than you. I say it because. 
even if you right now, even if right now you're listening to this and going like, no, they are both wrong. They're both wrong. Well, one, you could talk to us, but like, let's just think about it as an example of how when we disagree with each other as Christians, uh, we really can sit down and respect each other Mm -hmm. and both honor God and have a conversation where at the end of it, I bet you we'd both go, you know what? This was really great. Can we just pray? This felt like a really good thing. Mm -hmm. And so I think that, that whether or not it's something you agree on, like this even could be a time of year where maybe this is a big thing for you and you, you really get upset about it. Well, maybe instead of, you know, blasting everybody for being wrong, you could find that there's a really good opportunity to have a thoughtful and patient discussion with people about the way that you see it differently than them. And and I really think it can be an opportunity to glorify God because it's pretty amazing when we disagree and when we can see the bigger thing that we agree on and realize that, that that's ultimately the biggest thing and that we really do agree on who Jesus is. Right. I saw a story recently where this lady was going for cancer treatment. So she would go, you know, whether it be a couple times a week or it's in a, it was in the United States, but another state. And, and she would, she would have a lengthy drive and she'd be passenger in the car. Her husband was driving and they'd go past, it was out in the in countryside and they'd go by this one house that this guy had it. You talk about, and, and granted when I first saw it, I'm like, Ooh, that's creepy. Uh, all kinds of skeletons oh. and all the things that negatively you associate this time of year with. Yeah, okay. Just, but over the top, over the top. But she said what it did is every time that she would drive by the house, I mean, she would look at it and it would be like it got her mind off of her upcoming cancer treatment wow. and, and go back. And mm. they interviewed the guy whose house it was. He goes, yeah, oh, I get letters all the time, complaints. Mm. I get, he goes, mostly complaints. Mostly complaints because they see my address and they know, and they'll send me a letter, a derogatory letter, and and this. And he goes, and then one day I opened this letter and it was from this lady, and mm. just thanking him uh, for the diversion that it took her mind off of her uh, terrible situation, having to go for her chemotherapy, and it just took. And they became good friends. So there's two people who, on the surface you know, would maybe disagree. She wouldn't have her house decorated that way right? because that's not what I believe in. But thank you because it took my mind off of the diversion of my cancer treatment and it just eased my mind in a, granted, odd way. Yeah. But another example to me anyway, as I saw that, it's like when I saw that story, I'm like, that's God using something that some people would look at as like, oh, that's bad, but God can use it as a positive thing. So I know some people will say that, no, that's not right. And again, your personal conviction. But in her case, it took her mind off of something negative. Yeah. I I think, um, I think one thing we could bring this back to is like, what are you celebrating? I think for her, um, ultimately, (laughs) ultimately it sounds like she's, she's celebrating hope. Because she she believes that that it matters to think about something else other than just the pain of this treatment and that there's going to be hope beyond it. Like, that's a story that kind of celebrates hope in one sense. And like, really, that is the question. You know, what am I celebrating? Um, I don't mean like what day of the year am I celebrating? I mean, what am I celebrating behind what I'm doing? For that day of the year, because one person can say, I'm celebrating Halloween. And the other says, yeah, I'm celebrating Halloween. Those could mean two very different things. One could say like, yeah, this is when I try to scare the neighborhood kids. Oh, man. But if you're saying this is a time when I celebrate that I get to see kids around the neighborhood that otherwise maybe their parents don't let them get out much. And like this is a time where they can see that Jesus lady down the street really cares about them. And gives out the full-size candy bars. You know, I don't know, whatever. But what are we celebrating? And for me, just as a final word for me, is it's who you're celebrating. Yeah. And and maybe you see something this time of year that you don't agree with. But with God, it's always a matter of the heart, not what's decorated in your front yard. It's a matter of the heart. So with me, when I see that, I am celebrating Jesus and trusting Mm. my Lord and Savior for using that. Somehow, even though it doesn't make any sense to me, I'm trusting my Lord to use that for His glory. Doesn't make any sense to me, but it's who I'm celebrating today and every day. We weren't sure how you liked your coffee, so we didn't make any. Hope that's okay. It's Rise Up with Steve and Tim on Family Life. Tiny flickering flame, the scent that fills a room with a warm, fragrant ambiance. 
It is candle season, Steve. Mm, eh, true. But if one could make a candle with a scent that only they would know, ooh, what would that be? Something like your childhood home ooh. Or, or, or the smell of a friend's sweater? Invent a scented candle with a comforting smell only you would know. James from Jamestown, Pennsylvania. James, what's the candle that only you would know that smell? Uh, PVC glue. <laughs> oh my, <laughs> polyvinyl chloride. Ah, nothing makes PVC me feel cozy glue. and comfy like that. Whoa, uh, what memory is that associated with? I'm a third generation plumber, so that's the smell that we, everybody in the house is like, ah, that's glue is really strong. I'm like, yeah, why do you think we're all crazy? Oh, wow. Well, it sticks with you. It sticks with you. (laughs) Come closer to the radio so we can see you. Wow, you look great today. This is Rise Up on Family Life. Candle season, so if you made a special fragrance, but only you would know this smell, like it's really particular to you, you'd say, well, I think if you're a dog person, and really only dog people can get what Dawn is talking about here. She texts in, She'd have a candle of her puppy Daisy's head smell. The puppy head smell. You only get that if you're a dog person. It's so real, Dawn. We agree. Robin says the smell of her cat's fur. Well, equal when, time. You got a dog, dogs you got to have a cat. Yeah, yeah, but this is specific. Her cat's fur when he's been outside in the early morning. Very particular. Exactly. It's got to be when he's been outside early in the morning. These are great. They're just the smells only you would know. Yeah, who's this? Leroy Anderson. Guys, smells Pennsylvania. Burning leaves in the fall. Oh, I love that one. That, oh, that seriously, that's one of my favorites of all time. It really is. Cool. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it is. My name is Sammy. And I live in Blairstown, New Jersey. Hey, Sammy, what would be the candle scent that you and, well, maybe a few others would know it? From the time I was born until I was seven, I lived in this farmhouse, and whenever they would pour manure, I um, just love that smell for some reason. Just like the nostalgic smell from when I was young and lived in the house. So that would be the scent of the candle I used. Yeah. Wow, yeah. That, that is interesting. Some people would say that smell and go like, oh, no. But then other people, it, right. it is one of those smells. Oh, yeah. And it's like it's a comfort smell. It's home. It's good. It's, yep. I know where I am. So that's a perfect one. Good morning, John. Middlesex. John, what would be your candle you'd pick? I think you probably already know it. The scent of a loved one who has passed. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Never goes away. Never gets old, does it? Never does. Anyone else wish morning started just a little later? Yeah, we get that. It's Rise Up on Family Life. God is not a giraffe herder, Steve. He well, is... I've never heard that saying. Mm-mm, no, he's a shepherd. Ah. He doesn't hurt giraffes. Ooh. Now, I don't know if there are giraffe herders. It's kind of an mm. interesting thing to visualize, but I'm glad God herds sheep instead of giraffes, and here's what I mean by it. Okay. We're all on the same level. You know, I, I meet people all the time who have abilities or intelligence that I'll never measure up to, but in God's eyes, that's not the important thing. Like, he's at the end of the day, he's feeding sheep bringing his people together to feed on the grass, the Mm. green grass he gives us. You don't have to be able to reach way up there and get stuff that all those sheep below you giraffes can't reach. No, Mm. in front of God, uh, a person's abilities aren't what counts. We've all got to be humble. We're all eating the same grass, living on the same level in front of God calls every one of us to this gospel. That's, that's so simple, Mm -hmm. so pure, He doesn't hold it up high where only the giraffes can get it. Nope. You could be a CEO or a first grader, but we're all sheep in God's pasture. As refreshing as that first sip of coffee in the morning. This is Rise Up with Steve and Tim on Family Life. Thanks for not saying anything, Tim. Very polite of you uh, to not say anything oh. this morning. Oh, uh, you, Steve. You, you notice what's on my chin, right? Well, I mean, I do now. See? I didn't at first. Oh, come on now. I was looking at my laptop. No, Bro, really. It's true. On. It was a few yeah. minutes until right. I even noticed. Well, this morning as I was shaving, <laughs> and I shave in the shower. I know that's where sometimes I used to do it before. I, I don't want to get into all my personal habits. <laughs> But anyway, I was shaving, and then the, oh, I think I just cut myself. Oh, oh and when I got out of the shower, I'm like, yeah, sure wow. enough. And it wasn't just like a little thing. It was like a slice. I'm like, Ooh, oh. Ouch. So it, I had to go find a Band-Aid. Thank you, Earl Dixon. What? No. Well, Earl Dixon's the inventor of the Band-Aid. He worked for Johnson & Johnson, and he came up. His oh. He and his wife used to, like his wife used to burn herself and cut herself cooking. Oh, so happens. He, and so he came up. He, Earl Dixon is the inventor 
of the Band-Aid. So, go but here's, Earl. I needed an attitude adjustment this morning. And mm-hmm. so I had to go, but here's, cause here's where my attitude went. After mm-hmm. I cut myself shaving, I'm like, oh, what a start to the day. Yeah. And now I got to go find a Band-Aid, right. one that's not too huge. Is too huge, and then and and it was like, but I but it's right under my chin, and it's like, oh, just it just messed up my morning. Yeah, and so I came into work just a little while ago. I was I was in a bad mood. I was Aww. like, oh, it's just I know it's something silly, but it no, just but- it ruined my morning. So it's like, all right, Lord, thank you. I need to do something here, uh, devil. You're not going to steal my joy. What am I going to do? Oh, I want to give thanks in all things. Yes, I'm going to give thanks to the band aid. Wow. So I Googled who invented the Band-Aid. It was like Earl Dixon. It was like, thank you, Lord, for Earl Dixon. Yes. He invented the Band-Aids. Wow. And that helped my whole attitude. That is cool. Thankful in a thing that first upset me. Right. We can do that. Yeah. And so thank. But then I thought, well, if it wasn't for Earl Dixon, because I would have had to use like, and I did this for a little bit, toilet paper. Oh, yeah. I had to stick <laughs> a little piece of toilet paper That's up there. Just do to, That doesn't look That's good. Not the, do but it. then I would have been upset, but I would just say, thank you, Joseph Gayetti. I looked up who invented <laughs> toilet paper. <laughs> you Joseph, can be really Thankful today. You're thankful. So, in the midst of your inconvenience, mm-hmm. give thanks in all things. <laughs> yes. May the blessings of the Lord be with you in all that you do today. This is Rise Up on Family Life.